Hi everyone, my name is Lily Todorinova. I'm a librarian at Rutgers University and also one of the instructors for the OTN certificate program. So at Rutgers, I administer, um, along with a team of people, the open and affordable um, textbook program. And so today I'm gonna be discussing with you tips, suggestions, and issues alongside administering award programs to incentivize OER and affordability. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I promise to keep this video as brief as possible. Um, so we're gonna start, and uh, actually before I start, I do wanna just make a, a obvious note here to say that this is a really tough time to talk about um, giving out monetary awards. Uh, I know that in many institutions, including my own, we're grappling with uh, a lot of budgetary cuts and real critical issues right now. And so I just wanna say that and acknowledge it and also um, tell you that a, you know, in this presentation, I will be highlighting some awards that are not necessarily monetary because I do feel like um, uh, they will be much more prominent going forward, at least for the short term. And I just want to make this as relevant to you guys as possible um, as you're writing your action plans. Okay, so the first thing we want to think about in terms of award programs is, um, well, it's, it's really, it's the why. Why are, we, why are we administering an award program? Um, I will tell you as somebody who has been doing that for about six years that it is a significant investment of time, um, not, not just money, time in terms of personnel. And it will, if you're interested in doing it, you should know that it will challenge you in many different ways. And so we want to make sure that we understand why, what the value of, of doing it is. So I will definitely say that the type of institution that you're in matters. Okay, so you want to start thinking about that. In a large university like my own, um, spreading the word about something like OER and affordability in itself is a huge undertaking and a huge challenge. And so having a, an award um, to start conversations with as you go to faculty meetings, it is really helpful to have that. It really just opens the door to discuss OER in a positive way, not necessarily a punishing way. Um, and so it, it kind of is the point. So the award program is important in itself in that it does incentivize faculty to make some changes, much needed changes in their courses. But really it's about having that conversation and starting a momentum on your campus. On the other hand, if you are in a smaller university, and I have not worked in many small universities, so this is just me assuming things here, but I'm just gonna go, go with that. Um, but you are, if you are in a smaller place where faculty is perhaps more in contact with each other and has more of a teaching focus and um, the whole idea of, of just having a conversation is not as daunting as it is in other places, then you might wanna think about what kind of an award program you need in that institution. If you don't need to focus on the communication marketing aspect of OER, um, which again, an award is a very good vehicle for, then you can talk about, you know, what is it that I want this award program to do uh, differently. Um, again, just to emphasize that having, administering an award program, and I'm sure many of you out there are already doing that, um, is a challenging thing and it does take a lot of time and resources. And so just because we know that these are common, we know that institutions have them, um, it doesn't mean that it's the right decision for you necessarily. Okay, types of award programs. And so clearly we can break these down into two categories, one being monetary and one being non-monetary. Um, this is not to say again that one is better than the other. Um, in fact, and I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, some research I've been doing recently on this and um, with the awardees that I have at Rutgers. Um, what I was able to find is that 
a monetary incentive of say a thousand dollars is a pretty good tool um, for incentivizing certain types of instructors in particular part-time lecturers um, for the obvious and very unfortunate reason that um, they are underpaid right so a lot of part-time instructors just do not get the financial assistance that they, that they deserve and um, in addition to that they just don't get um, professional development funding and other types of things that full-time faculty um, sometimes get and so to them um, perhaps 500 to a thousand dollars for making a change in the course that you were already kind of thinking that you should make is a great idea and it's a, it's it's definitely effective in incentivizing on the other hand if you're talking to somebody who has been tenured um tenured tenured professor been there at the institution for a long time um the money might not actually be that it, it might not be effective for them you might have to think about other types of more uh customized sort of incentives to build into your program so that you are capturing the wide variety of instructors that we know actually work at universities um, because there there are definitely a lot of different types of them right so if you are putting in some money to your award program how much should you do um, you know typically i see these as up to a thousand dollars for something like a course redesign um, I do not know why a thousand dollars is the magic number in this context. I would guess that it's a nice round number and um, it's not too too big, it's not too little, uh, right? So that would be that would be my guess. I do like the idea of of having a more um, array of of monetary rewards. So you know, depending on maybe the complexity of the project, and so you can open up to something like. 250 say to um, 2000 or something, depending on what it is that the faculty member is actually doing uh, to redesign these courses. So that's, that's something to think about. Um, and then of course we have the non-monetary uh, category, which is a big category with a lot of possibilities. And I feel like a lot of unexplored possibilities in fact. And, and also, they're not mutually exclusive, right? So you could be running a, a typical course redesign award program and also build in some non-monetary awards to at least pilot them and see what works and what doesn't. So I'm gonna be giving you some examples of these. Uh, there's some already on the slide in terms of what you could be doing uh, with teaching recognition involving student support, which is a really critical aspect. Uh, maybe working a little bit more with promotion and tenure on that aspect, but I will also be sharing a slide at some point. Oh, there it is. Uh, with some actual concrete suggestions from places out there. And um, these are just, I mean, there's so many, it would be impossible for me to put them all in this presentation. Uh, but definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, these are the ones that I've, I've highlighted. And you could see that the first three are monetary awards, the second are non-monetary awards. And again, this just gives you a, a better perspective about uh, what it is that you um, could do with these. One final note uh, on this subject uh, before I move on is to be careful about the language that you're using. So in this presentation, I've already been using award programs. Um, I started off the program that I'm running right now calling it a grant program. And I feel like a lot of us instinctively wanna go there. Um, but I think you, we wanna be careful and you definitely wanna include some uh, perspectives on what to call the program. Um, because what I found out is that um, that term tends to be a little bit off-putting to certain types of faculty and also certain business um, administrators because, um, you know, for, for valid reasons, right? So the word grant is a very specific thing in, in academia. It, it, there's a lot of reporting requirements you have to do. There's a lot more oversight that you have to do. And the types of award programs that we typically see with OER um, that has to have to do with course redesigns typically don't um, necessarily fall into that category of a grant, which is why I've been using the word award. Um, 
Now, if you are actually interested in administering a program that is geared towards producing OER and would probably be, you know, carry probably a bigger financial um, incentive to that, then you could, you could sort of figure out if maybe having those reporting requirements would tip you over into being more of a grant territory so then the language might not matter as much. Uh, but I think the scale of what these typically are is, is much smaller. Okay, so then the next thing I just want to do is just kind of talk through some of the pros and cons of administering an award program. Um, I've mentioned several of these already. So on the, on the green side, on the pro side, we see that these certainly do incentivize OER adoption and creation. Uh, creation, to a, a lesser degree, I would think, um, depending on the amount of money that you're providing and the, uh, amount of type of support you're providing. But certainly, if, you, if you're at a campus where um, people have already been thinking about making some very, really um, timely changes to their courses and, uh, and have never seen open SACs and are kind of excited about piloting to use it or some of those other um, well-known open textbooks, then I feel like, yeah, you could definitely, uh, with very little money, convince them to make these changes. It might take some time to build the momentum, uh, but it's certainly possible. In addition, and again, I've been talking about growing momentum throughout this, um, but you can also use them to uh, generate data. You know, show that libraries are invested in areas that are very, very central to students. I feel like I need to pause on that one for right now because in this current environment that we're in, we are going to, we are already asked to show in many institutions, you know, what is it that you're doing for students? Um, what kind of resources and are you providing in this present moment virtually? Um, as well as like in general, what is your investment in, in the student experience? And so having an award program, um, not using it to show that, but actually um, buying into it to make some changes in the student experience, I think is very, very critical and will continue to be so. Another thing that these uh, award programs can do is they uh, open doors to collaboration with various units. You know, everybody wants to get on board with a successful program. And so if you are running a um, incentive award uh, situation and uh, the Office of Teaching and Learning hears about it, they might want to collaborate with you. And that is a, a great thing to have. Um, in my experience, I've had a great success working with Center for Teaching and Learning, as well as student government, um, who also have a pretty big mandate in, um, again, uh, helping students navigate the college experience and affordability. And so they were excited to work with us and, and provided actually some funding for our program. Another thing to mention here, you know, even if you start with a relatively modest goal of just getting people to adopt some existing OER, it could grow into something bigger, which is, it, which is important. So these award programs do have to be maintenance and re-examined many, many times. Just because, uh, you know, just because it worked the first couple of years doesn't mean you want to stop there, right? You want to put in some more um, um, effort into figuring out how to grow the program into something that can be more sustainable and some maybe more impactful in the future. And so that's where uh, that's where a lot of my thinking goes these days. Is that I've been doing this for six years. You know, what can I do to make this program? Um, bigger, better, in, in what way, you know? Um, changing these processes is really, really important. Changing the, uh, the rubrics, the criteria that you're using, clarifying the process every time you do it is critical. Um, all right, so other things to mention. Um, yes, so even if, if you are sort of narrowly focused in the beginning, that's usually a good way to start you know, obviously, but then maybe that can lead to some, some different kinds of, of actions later on. And again, just to stress, money is nice, but you don't, it doesn't necessarily incentivize people in the same way you might think. 
Um, there are other things that people want from their departments, uh, whether it is more time, uh, whether it is um, just recognition for the work that they already are doing. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to incentivize people in an academic environment that is not necessarily tied to money. And here I just want to pause very briefly so that you think about what are some pros that you think an award program could bring to your campus. So hopefully you can think of one or two things right now as you're listening to this and then we'll move on to maybe let's see whoops okay so there's some cons right so hopefully you thought of some pros because there's definitely cons okay so the first one is of course yes money i think i've i think i've explained that enough and you certainly know it in your daily reality um but it is it is something to, to grapple with in this present time and i think it, it it's calling on us as people who might have already been administering these programs to really be thinking critically about do i need to be giving money is there other ways in which i can incentivize action right now i feel like there's other ways too so let's continue to be creative about this it is really really hard um you know um you do have to drop pretty much everything else you're doing for at least some time and devote a lot of a, a lot of time to designing the program in order for it to run smoothly there's going to be a lot of kinks to work out many problems have to be sorted out there's going to be a lot of emails um, more than you thought it was possible okay so that's something to think about you know whose job is it who is the right person to be running this program um there isn't really a job right so like we are librarians we just do a lot of different things nobody's going to be um necessarily trained on how to do this and so it's really is going to come down to who thinks this is important um who can possibly pull this through um, and do you want like a stable group of people through you know throughout time do you want to you want to sort of add membership as it goes along um, there's many different ways to do that right you're basically volunteering to enter the bureaucracy when you're doing this okay so everything has to be very well documented um, this especially if money is involved um, you are responsible to make sure that it's all the way it should be that the projects that's, that faculty is executing are, to the best of your knowledge, are being executed in that right way that they said. Um, it's not that easy. And then you also have to say no to some great people. Uh, this is not something that we like to do, I think, in this profession uh, when we can avoid it. Uh, but saying no is half of the point, right? So you can't just award everybody, even if even if they're deserving in many other ways um you have to be sort of um critical and stay with the um the outlines of the program that you have uh out, outlined for people because if you and this has happened to me so we have uh we have definitely given some awards in the past um a faculty that were doing some of the affordable kind of work so they were using they were definitely making the course more affordable, not necessarily making it open. Um, thinking that if we award them for, for doing the work of affordability, we can have more conversations with them it, to build up into um, OER. It really didn't go that way. In fact, uh, it went the other way where they just kept applying over and over again for this award and we eventually had to start saying no. Uh, but it, it, it was a tricky no because, you know, they were awarded for doing the same thing to a different course and so why are we saying no now and not then and so it, it is it's going to take you some practice to come up with the right way to say no um but it is important in order to maintain the sort of integrity of the program okay so just a couple of tips to leave you with um it's important to know the financial sort of um, policies of your institution. 
this is a question that comes up now and again in the, in these sort of in this topic. Uh, you know, do you give people checks? Do you give them actual money? Do you transfer uh, funds to the department? Like how how is how are things being done? And it's just really going to depend on everybody's institutional policies. My suggestion is to keep it as uh, as as open as possible and to take as little um, responsibility if you can as possible and so how we do it at Rutgers is that uh, we do give faculty some money for making these course redesigns but we transfer the money to the department and the department then decides through their policies how they want to pay that out to the faculty do they want to give it in as a sum do they want to keep it as sort of a, a travel fund or research fund we don't really, we try not to dip into that ter territory for obvious reasons. Um, I would say definitely read up on some project management. Uh, again, this is something that is such an important part of our profession that we've never been taught. Um, and so it, giving you it, this, running an award program if you're not doing it already will give you that experience. Uh, but I would suggest, uh, you know, reading up on it, contacting people for sure. And so you saw that slide of all these institutions um, that administer award programs. Feel free to reach out to them. I'm going to volunteer them right now. Uh, reach out to me as well. I'm always more than happy to talk to anybody that's starting in this process or, or anybody that has questions or thoughts about this process. I do think that you need to continually, continuously revise the rubrics and criteria just to make it as, as um, focused as possible. You know, the reality is that people apply to a lot of things that they shouldn't probably apply to, right? Um, and maybe sometimes it's because they didn't read what the thing is, or maybe it wasn't very clear. And so continuously make it clear to them what your goal is as an award program. Uh, be flexible, so, you know, Sometimes you do have to sort of think about, is this project really fitting my criteria? I know I just, I just said have narrow criteria, but sometimes things that are too narrow don't benefit students, right? And so if it's something that is gonna be hugely beneficial to students, but is not as neat as you want it to be, um, I, would, I would encourage some flexibilities. And, and then especially now as we're scrambling for funding, it's a great time to be partnering up with uh, other units. And I know that's easier said than done. Um, but, you know, starting the conversation somewhere, maybe not starting it with an ask, but maybe starting it as educating them about what you do uh, could be one aspect. And of course, you want to devote maybe like 80% of your time administering an award program with the issues of publicity, outreach, and marketing. You want it to be a good conversation starter in order for it to be impactful. Okay, so I'm going to end it right there and uh, that's it. So please reach out to me if you have any questions and I'm going to add my email to the video at the very end. Thank you.